Hello, this is a reply to Simon's comments about um, Dr. Adarian Pocock, the earlier today. Before we get there, there's going to be a bit of ancient history. Don't run away, please. It's not that boring. Um, first, we're going to have Sargon. This is Sargon, whose byname was Sargon of Akkad. He flourished in the 23rd century BCE. Ancient, he was an ancient Mesopotamian ruler. He was also one of the world, earliest of the world's great empire builders. We're not going to have a lot about him. He's just a few lines. He's uh, immensely famous and an instrumental figure in history. However, I'm only interested in a small bit on him. It's really his daughter I'm interested in, and then Dr. Pocock. This is the, um, the little-known Mesopotamian poet and priestess, Enehe Jongwana, who wasn't known until 1927 from a, an architectural dig by, an archaeological dig, sorry, by Leonard Woolley, which dug up tablets which are concerned with her. Her name means ornament of heaven, and the tablets that were dug up include temple hymns and standalone poems. Now, there is some debate about whether she actually wrote these or just recited them. She is sometimes called an author. Sometimes it's considered that she was more likely to be a, a figure reciting these for religious goals in the society of the time and was more like a priest just reciting already extant texts. In any case, she was a figure of some power. The reason I mention her, however, is this. This is the article that Simon commented on. He started by going on about he couldn't believe how some people who he normally considers sharp are so fat, could be so fat headed. However, he could have done people the courtesy of reading out the comments by the woman. And here's what Maggie Adair and Pocock actually has to say. And I'm going to read out the two paragraphs that were the are most important for this. I was giving a talk in the Scottish Parliament, she explains, we meet at a photographer's studio hidden in a blink and you'll meet it alleyway in East London. And I mentioned Anne Hedjewana, the first female scientist who was known as chief priestess for the moon goddess of the city of Ur in ancient Mesopotamia. After the talk, the chair suggested they vote to bestow on Adir and Pocock the title of chief priestess for the moon goddess of the city of Edinburgh. That's what I would like on my business card, she says, with a delighted clap of her hands and the kind of irresistible enthusiasm that viewers of the sky at night will be familiar with. Basically a bit of banter. But it's the next bit that caused eruptions and caused thousands of incredibly racist comments to spiral up the screen on Simon's channel. Some of them the most incredibly vile and ridiculous kind. Forgotten or uncredited scientists such as N. Huduana feature prominently in Adaran's Pocock's new book, The Art of Stargazing, a practical guide to identifying and understanding the 88 constellations. She's also keen for us to look at these familiar formations through non-Western eyes. We are accustomed to a version of the celestial map that was charted and she tagged, she says, by white men in togas, but many people in cultures and civilizations outside ancient Greece and Rome have done this sort of thing of looking up and saying that doesn't this package of dogs, stars look a bit like our dog. Yes, they have. For some reason, this caused massive, massive horror to Simon. The idea that we might look at, uh, basically, what she's saying here is other f forms of early astronomy and air astrology, since early on they blend into each other and it's a bit hard to separate them out until later in history. Of course they have. Chinese astronomy is hugely influential in the nation's history and something most of us will have at least some vague familiarity to with. This is Indian astronomy. The Arabs made major contributions to it. Indeed, they preserved much of the ancient world's knowledge until it was rediscovered. Instead of commenting on that, though, what we got was the Simon version of events, where a black woman was daring to say something like this. And Dr. Pocock's background was not mentioned once. Dr. Pocock is a woman who came from a not particularly well-off background, popped herself through Imperial College and gained a PhD in mechanical engineering and has went on to a quite successful career. But instead of any, any claps or applause for that, when I mentioned it, 
in replying to Simon's lovely subscribers, and I use the word lovely advisedly here, what we got was comments about it's not a proper degree, silly stuff like that. You owe this woman, I would say, an apology, Simon. You've caused her to be insulted thousands of times in a in a row on your channel, in a and in a particularly vile and racist manner. What you've done there is deeply unpleasant and deeply, deeply horrid. It's particularly terrifyingly bad when it's bad enough for, and hard enough for working class people to get to that level in academia. You've knocked someone down who actually tried to climb upwards and you've punched, you know, punched at them. Not good, Simon. Not good at all.